All right, ladies and gentlemen, great job on your workout. It is time to cool it down and stretch. Find yourself your PVC pipe or broomstick or painter stick, anything that's long enough that you can take your hands pretty wide on. We're gonna start bringing that heart rate down by a nice easy step to side to side with a little bit of rotation. We're releasing that spine, bringing that heart rate down. As you rotate, start bringing your front arm up a little bit higher. So you're reaching for shoulder height. At this point, you can stop your feet from actually moving and just allow that back foot to pivot. Now we're going to take the arm all the way up over your head with a little bit of a pause. So we're slowing down, but we're getting a full stretch down the side of the body. Remember, like I've said before, if you get dizzy on this one, feel free to keep your eyes forward or just look at the wall next to you. You do not have to turn your head all the way back behind. On this next one, I want you to make a full circle. So once you get it behind your head, bring it all the way down until you're facing me. And then that opposite arm comes over, face the wall, and back. Let's repeat same side. So pivot all the way, arm comes back behind, onto the glutes, turn your hips to face the wall, and the other arm comes. We'll pick up that pace a little bit. Big circle, and finish the circle. Big circle, and finish. One more to make five. Big circle. Now let's switch directions. I'm gonna go toward my right. Big circle. Turn to the left. Finish it. Remember that your grip can be as loose as you want, especially if you have a short pull. Keep your fingers nice and loose so that that bar can rotate nice and easy. This makes number five, and we're going to take it to center all the way up. Open up your shoulders as much as you can, trying to really bring them back. Bring the bar back down to the front. Straight leg deadlifts to roll that bar down. Pause with that nice straight back. A little bit of a bend in the knees. Feel the hamstring stretch. And repeat back up. Big open. Abs nice and tight so the back arch is not pulling on the low back. Bring it back forward. Step a foot slightly in front. Take that same straight leg deadlift. Don't let the hips pop out to the side. You should feel one leg getting a little more stretched than the other. Right now I feel my back glute getting a little bit more stretch. Back to center, big lift. Open to the ceiling. And other foot comes in front. Press those hips straight back. All right, we're going to keep with just our step in front, but now we're going to pull those toes up. Roll that bar down. Feel the back of that front leg get a nice pull. All the way up and switch. We're gonna do two more on each side, holding each one just for a couple of seconds. Switch. This makes number two. I got one more to go on each side. Nice job. Heart rate should definitely be coming down by this point. Be able to maintain nice gentle breaths. All right, we're going to take ourselves into a standing quad stretch. Feel free to keep your hand on the top of that pole. Use it for balance. You can also use the wall or no balance if you want, but our focus here is on the stretch of that quadricep. So from the side view, you want to make sure that the leg that's in the air, that knee is not out in front. You will not feel your quad stretch the correct way with that leg out in front. So bring that knee back, chest nice and tall, squeeze the glutes and try to tilt your pelvis under. Immediately that stretch should come up higher toward the hip flexor, up toward the front, or the top, not the front, we're already in front, up toward the top of that quadricep connection. And switch legs. Grab on. 
Keep those knees together, a little bend in that bottom knee. Chest is tall. Squeeze the glute, try to tilt that pelvis forward, feel that stretch get higher. Awesome. Kick out the legs. We're gonna use our pole for one more thing. Whether your pole is tall or short, you're gonna take your hands wherever you can reach them out in front. We're gonna press our hips back at the same time as we press our, our uh, hands forward. So you may be in the middle of your pole, you may be up on top, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that pole isn't gonna go anywhere out from underneath you. We're gonna press straight down, opening up the shoulders. This one should feel good. Feel it through the lats, run the sides of the shoulders. You may feel this at the front of your shoulders a little bit. Let's come back up. Let's take a deep breath in and blow it out as you reach into this stretch. All right, back to center. Set your pole to the side. We're going to go down to the ground, but we're going to do so with one nice big walk out. Big reach up, down to those toes. We're on both feet instead of single leg. Try to keep those knees as straight as you can. Flatten your hands as soon as you can, nice and slow. Try to keep those heels pressed down. When you get all the way out, we're gonna lower to the ground. Press up on your hands or forearms, stretching out the front side of our core. And we're going to come back down and push all the way back into a pike. I don't care how you come up. It can worm the whole way if you want. Press those heels down. Try to open up your shoulders. Excellent. We're going to come forward into one big Everest step. Feel free to drop your back knee on this one. The inside arm is going to press the knee open. Stretching out a little bit of inner thigh as well as a little bit of hip and glute. Excellent. Straighten out that front leg. Toes to the ceiling. Reach for those toes, keeping the front leg as straight as you can. Now, if flexibility is not your thing and you really struggle with getting low on these, you can also keep your stick around and use it to kind of help hold you up on both the uh, Everest position as well as that straight leg reach. Just know that it's there to help you if you need it. All right, let's push back into the Everest. We're gonna lift up that back knee, return to the plank, push back for one more pike. And back to plank into the opposite side, Everest. Drop that knee if you would like. Press open on that hip and glute. Nice job. Remember, we're looking to feel gentle pulls and gentle stretches. Stretching should never be painful. If you stretch to pain, your muscles will tighten even more to prevent you from actually injuring yourself. Press back. Pull those toes up, reach for the toes. That is really important to remember. A lot of times we um, believe that more is better. And if I can stretch myself to pain for five seconds, then I'm better off uh, time-wise rather than just taking a nice long stretch for 10 to 30 seconds. And press back forward into that Everest. Lift up that back knee, bring that leg back. We're gonna lower to the ground one more time. And press up, stretching out the front side of the body. Turn your head and look over one shoulder. Pull that shoulder back like you're trying to touch that shoulder back to your legs behind you. And switch sides. So try not to just turn your head. Also pull that shoulder back that you're looking at. Back to center. Let's push back into a child's pose. Round the low back. Take a couple nice deep breaths right here. Kind of shift side to side with your hips. As if you're trying to press one side of the body down toward the ground. 
We're gonna come up to all fours and we're gonna finish our stretch with a nice big cat cow. So take a deep breath in, press the ground away through your knees and your hands, round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest. Now blow that air away. Allow your shoulder blades to collapse into each other, your chin to reach forward, your tailbone to tip up to the ceiling. And let's repeat, deep breath in. Press into the ground, round as much as you can. You can even shift front to back a little bit. And release, long spine. One more time, deep breath in. Tuck it all up tight. And blow it away. All right, guys, take those hands out in front. Sit the hips back and let's finish in a child's pose. While you're here, I want you to think about all of the reasons why you continue to work hard on your fitness, why you keep showing up every day. Who is it that you do it for? Yourself, your spouse, your family, your children, your grandchildren, Whatever reason it is, thank them for their encouragement. Thank yourself for being true to yourself and continuing to work hard and to push yourself, knowing that you're on your own in that room and you can quit anytime, but you don't. You force yourself to keep pushing because you know that you are worth it. You're worth every repetition every raise of heartbeat, every sucking wind, you are worth it. So keep being true to yourself and working hard. You guys are awesome. All right, come on out whenever you're ready. Finish out the day with any other stretches anywhere else that's feeling tight. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for joining me, guys.